This solid uniform disk has a mass of 0.5 kilograms and a radius of 0.1 meter. It can rotate about a frictionless axis that goes through the center of the disk. Its rotational inertia can be found using this equation 1 half mr squared. A string wraps around the disk and then goes over a light frictionless pulley and is attached to a hanging 0.4 kilogram box. The string does not slip on the disk or on the pulley. Find the acceleration of the box, the angular acceleration of the disk, and the tension in the string. Before we start working on this problem, let's review an old one. We used to do problems like this. A 4 kilogram box on table is attached to a string that goes over a massless pulley and tied to a hanging 1 kilogram box. Ignore friction. Find the acceleration of the boxes and the tension in the string. One way to solve this problem is to draw a force diagram and write a force equation for each box. There is no friction, so this box is going to accelerate downward and the 4 kilogram box is going to accelerate to the right. So when we draw the force diagram for the 4 kilogram box, we just have to worry about the horizontal forces. Without friction, the only horizontal force acting on the 4 kilogram box is the tension in the string. For the 1 kilogram box, the acceleration is vertical, so we draw the vert vertical forces. We have mg, which is uh, 10 newtons, and the tension in the string pulling upward. So the force equation for the 4 kilogram box is uh, the net force equals to ma. There is only one force in the horizontal direction, so the net force is the tension, which equals to 4 times the acceleration. And then the force equation for the 1 kilogram box is uh, the acceleration goes down. That means the downward force is bigger. So we use the bigger side minus the smaller side, and that gives us uh, m times a. We have two equations for our two unknowns, t and a. We can solve them any way we want, but it can be convenient for us to stack them and add them together so the tension, the internal force, will cancel. And what we get is the 10 equals to 4a plus 1a, which gives us 4 plus 1 times the acceleration. So we'll find the acceleration to be 2 meters per second squared. And if we plug the acceleration back in, we'll find the tension is 8 newtons. This problem is very similar to that one. In the old problem, we had both boxes doing translational motion. But in this one, we got one box doing translational motion and the disk is doing rotational motion. For the boxes doing translational motion, we write net force equals to ma for the boxes. So we will still write net force equals to ma for this box that does translational motion. But what do you think you will write for the disk that does rotational motion? We will write net torque equals to I alpha for the disk. But first, we're going to find the direction of acceleration and draw the force diagrams. Because the axles have no friction, so this box is going to accelerate downward. And we will draw the force diagram for this box. You have mg going down, that is uh, 4 newtons, and the tension going up. So the net force equals to ma for the 0.4 kilogram box would be acceleration goes down, so the downward force is bigger, so we can do the bigger force minus the smaller force equals to m, 0.4 times the acceleration. For the pulley, we have to write the net torque equals to I alpha. So we have to look at the forces that produces torque on the disk. There's mg acting on the disk, but the mg acts from the center of mass of the disk, which goes through the axle. So the mg, in this case, does not provide any torque. The disk is touching the axle, so there is a force from the axle. But whatever force 
from the axle would produce zero torque. So we do not have to worry about that force either. The disc is also touching the string. Does this tension from the string produce any torque? I can draw the top view of the disc. The string wraps around the disc and gets pulled out here. Since the string is going to come out tangent to the circle, so this tension does not go through the axis. It does produce torque. To find the torque produced by the tension, we just have to do the force times the, the lever arm. So the net torque is produced by the tension in the string, which is uh, tension times the lever arm. The lever arm is the distance between the line of force and the axis. Since tension is tangent to the circle, so this perpendicular distance is the radius. The radius is 0.1. And this equals to I alpha, and I is uh, one half mr squared. So this is one half, the mass of the disk is uh, 0.5. The radius of the disk is 0.1. And what is alpha? The alpha and the acceleration, they are related because uh, there's a string wrapped around the disc, and the string does not slip. So the string's acceleration is tangent to the circle. The string's acceleration is the tangential acceleration of this disc. And what is tangential acceleration? It is uh, r times alpha. Because the disc is uh, rotating about a fixed axis, and the string does not slip. The r is 0.1. So what is alpha? We can conveniently replace alpha with a divided by 0.1. And this a, the tangential acceleration, is the same as that a. So uh, instead of writing the alpha, we can write a divided by 0.1, a over r. In this particular case, we happen to be able to cancel the 0.1 here. And then this point one would also cancel with that point one. They don't always cancel, but in this case, we happen to be able to. So the torque equation becomes uh, T equals to, here we have one half times point five times, uh, there's only A left right there. We have now two equations with two unknowns, T and the A. We can solve for our two unknowns any way we want. But again, it can be convenient if we stack these two together, just like before. So this is 1 half times 0.5, which gives us 0.25 times the acceleration. We can stack them together and then add them. And this internal force tension would cancel. So we have to 4 equals to 0.4a plus 0.25a, which is 0.65 times a. So we can find the acceleration to be 6.15 meters per second squared. To find the tension, all we have to do is plug the acceleration back in here, and we will find tension to be 1.54 newtons. And how do we find the alpha of the disk? To find alpha, we just have to divide A by R. So A over R gives us the alpha, which is 6.15 divided by the radius 0.1. So this gives us 61.5 radians per second squared. By the way, this rotational inertia of 1 half mR squared is not something you have to remember. The equation is different for different special shapes. If you need to use it on the test or on the AP exam, they will be given to you. The only rotational inertia equation you need to memorize is the one for point mass, the I equals to mR squared.